Hello. What I have sitting in front of me is a new invention called the Fret Zealot, and this is the box it comes in. Now, just so you know, this is a Kickstarter project that I personally backed, full disclaimer, right up front, and I just want to say I just got it uh, a week ago, and I want to go over possibly how good or bad it is. So if you don't know what a Fret Zealot is, it is this kind of like sticker, LED sticker, that goes across your whole neck. I don't know if you can see that. It goes across the whole neck of a guitar, and it's designed for two things. One of them is to try and teach beginning guitars how to play guitar. Basically, we have a, an app on the phone, or they put an app on the phone, and the idea is when you pick a certain song on the phone, it shows in real time how to play the song on the fretboard. So basically, uh, if you've ever played Rocksmith, it's very similar to that. Uh, you can also obviously slow down the songs or the tabs that you're trying to teach yourself so that a beginning guitarist might be able to learn it much easier, if you know what I'm saying. But the second reason is it also works as an LED light show. So in other words, if you're on stage, and this is why I tried to back it, if you're on stage, you can play these certain kinds of patterns across your fretboard that looks really cool and makes people go, wow, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, that is the idea of how it's supposed to go down. So the box that it comes in contains quite a few things, uh, all related to actually the product itself, so you're not getting too many bonuses. Uh, the big thing obviously being the sticker LED strip, but also the pack that powers it. It's all battery operated, so in other words, you got to charge this thing up if you want to use the Fred Zealot. I haven't tested how long this charge lasts, but from what I can tell you that I've been using this quite a bit over the past two days, so it has lasted with all of that on just one charge. So there is quite a hefty amount of charge. Other than that, it comes with a capo, which the battery is currently connected to, because the idea is you want to actually clip this onto the headstock of your guitar. So this is actually at one of the points I actually noticed something a little wrong with the Fret Zealot. Uh, the capo does fit on with the battery pack pretty well on a guitar like this, but it doesn't fit very well on the other guitars I own, because you see the headstocks for the other guitars I own are more angular and there's less space. So in other words, Finding a position to put this Fret Zealot on was a challenge for me. But either way, if you find a spot to put it on, it apparently has stayed on very well with the other guitars I have tried it with. Uh, the only other thing it really comes with are picks, actually, believe it or not, to use. And also, this cable that connects the battery pack to the uh, Fret Zealot. Now, here's the thing. It looks just like an auxiliary cable. It is not. Uh, they actually specify this. It is not an auxiliary cable. Do not expect it to work with some other cable. If you want to replace this part, it's actually going to be, uh, I'm going to assume, some sort of hoop to jump through. But other than that, that's pretty much all you need to use the Fret Zealot. Once it's charged, all you do is turn it on with this battery pack. But I'm going to tilt it towards you so you can actually see the lights turn on. Uh, here's what it looks like. As you can see, uh, there's the whole boot up process it goes through. And then from there, you have to connect your app to it to make it create more kinds of effects. So I'm going to actually bring up the app right now. So I'm going to now hit the random button and we're going to see the kind of light show it puts on. There you are. So this is one of the uh, options it has, which is just honestly a pretty bright kind of, you know, lighting system. We also have. Oh, not that one. If you hit random sometimes, the same thing will pop up again. This is kind of like a sparkle setting, I guess. It's not exactly um, astounding or anything, but I guess it still looks like a cool pattern. The other one is this one, which is just honestly colors going up and down the neck, which I honestly think is the best looking light show. But right now, as of right now, these are the only settings you can have for the light show. Uh, you may have noticed that this fret right here happens to be um, not working. That's not due to a manufacturing problem, so don't worry about that. That was a personal error, which I'll get into that story later. Now, I will like to talk about everything else, because what you've seen right now is basically the bulk of what it can do that I appreciate. Because after fiddling with this thing for about two days now, I absolutely loathe this piece of machinery. So basically, one of the big things uh, you should notice when doing anything with this Fred Zealot is they're trying to go for a one-size-fits-all approach and as you may know guitars come in different shape sizes and the whole one-size-fits-all approach does not work as well as you might want it to so you may notice on this fretboard that these little LEDs are not lining up with the frets on the board itself and that's because 
each of these rows of dots are supposed to represent just one fret. So in other words, if you look at it, you can notice that each row does represent a fret. But there are a few fundamentally huge errors that comes from this kind of a system. Now, one of the big ones, the huge ones, I would like to put is simply playing it becomes confusing. I am a pretty solid player. I've been playing guitar for at least a decade. I'm not going to go into specific t details about how long I've been playing, but I would like to believe I'm fairly proficient at it. And using this system just confused my brain because the LEDs and the fret bars themselves simply work against each other. Sometimes my brain is thinking that these lights are signifying where the frets start and end, and in a way it creates this huge like dilemma in my head where I see twice as many frets as there actually are. It gets really confusing. Now the idea, I guess you can say, is that you have to treat the bars themselves, these LED bars, you have to treat them like they themselves are where you're supposed to place your finger. So in other words, as long as you're pressing your finger on one of these buttons, or not buttons, these LED strips, you are still going to play a note. And that note will coincide with what it's trying to tell you. And yes, that is true. But once again, um, there's a huge fundamental flaw in that, and that is, even if it's a beginner playing it, you know what I mean? Even if it's a like brand new, haven't played a guitar before in my whole life kind of player, um, it will teach them how to play the guitar the wrong way. You know what I mean? Because then you're teaching the person that you have to put your fingers in these precise placements uh, to play the guitar. And muscle memory wise, that is not very effective. That's going to create a very, very obscure way of playing a guitar, which is honestly kind of scary to me. It is. It is possible to play it like that, but I wouldn't advise it at all. Other than that, the whole LED strips themselves, beside the fact that they um, create a very, very odd sense of playing it, also do not slide onto the neck perfectly. So not only does it look like I have twice as many frets to myself, it also feels like it, which is very bad because these LED strips do not stick onto the fretboard so perfectly that they don't feel like they're there. That is not the case at all. When you slide over this, you can feel that it's there. And that really, really is not okay. And in addition to that, it not sticking perfectly is also a huge fundamental flaw to string buzz, which is what my huge, major gripe with this thing is. These little stickers here pop off right under the uh, sixth string. These sections of the LED strip tend to work just fine with regarding string buzz. They don't do much at all. But once we hit right here with these little bottom ones, like it sounds fine if you hit the bottom one. Oh, it didn't there, but it usually does. But a lot of the times when you press down on this bottom string and try to play a note, it just buzzes horrendously and it sounds horrible. You get no sustain at all. And it's not due to me installing it incorrectly. They do require a very, very specific type of install for this. In other words, it's not going to be as simple as just you just stick it on, it's fine. You actually have to make sure the sticker is placed exactly properly in the right place if you don't want to pop off the neck. And even then, it still pops off right at the bottom. And that is mainly because, I mean, I'll give it, the stickers are pretty okay right at the beginning, right at the get-go, but it's been sitting in this box for however long it wants to sit flat. And everyone knows if you take a certain type of material like this and you keep it flat, it's going to want to keep being flat. So when you try and push it onto this neck and bend it along this neck like it wants you to, which it does make you bend it around the neck, this little part where it bends wants to go back to being flat, which makes it pop off because now it wants to try and resume its natural shape, which then causes the string buzz to start happening. Now another thing you may want to say about that case is, well it comes down to action then. If you have a uh, higher action, as in if the strings are farther from the guitar neck, uh, it won't bother that as much. And that is false, because as soon as you press down a string and try and hit a certain fret, that string will obviously lower and it will hit the other LEDs, because it's not as simple as just you hit this string and it hits the LED that's right here. That's not the case. It will hit all the LEDs all the way down the neck. So that's coming from a person that actually has played the guitar for many years. When it comes to learning a guitar, this thing actually fails massively as well. So as I said earlier, they have an app that lets you, you know, play your songs you want to play. And the problem here is, as good as an idea as it might be to actually try and teach someone in this kind of manner, which I will admit the premise is not bad, they absolutely 
fail the execution. Any song you pick on here will not only be completely incorrect tab-wise, but it it's even wrong time-wise. It's wrong in every single way you might do. And it has all these ratings here that don't help. They really don't. You're going to have ratings here that are saying it's only one stars. And you're going to have ratings here that's saying it's only five stars. Or not only, but oh, amazingly five stars. But either way, these tabs will just be wrong. So I'm going to be doing Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. And I know how to play this song, actually. Um, if you look on Ultimate Guitar and just look up the best Nothing Else Matters tab, you will find a very, very correct way of playing it. This is how they want you to play it, and I will try and overlay the sound if I can from the actual um, app that it gives you. So I'll play it right now. So as you can see, this bottom fret here shows open string notes. So far, this is a correct tab. Not hard to screw this part up. This part, also very similar to how it is played until we get here. And then it starts getting really, really bizarre on the kinds of tabbing techniques they're trying to put here. It doesn't even come close to playing what it actually should be. And that was Nothing Else Matters. That's a famous Metallica song. I'm actually going to do uh, Wish You Were Here Now. And this, the first time I loaded up Wish You Were Here, I was floored. Floored by how wrong it all was. Now, I would be playing the song now if for every time I launched this app, it didn't tell me that there were no records found under songs. See, the app itself is actually completely flawed as well. Um, it is a, a newer app, but they should have really tested this way better because when I was showing you the light show stuff earlier, the light show itself, like I said, only has those three settings and the only way you can do it is by hitting random. And by doing that, you can very easily get the same light shows you've been getting. So I have had a segment where I would put random ten times in a row and get one kind of thing. So for example, we have this now. I'm going to hit it again. Sparkle, hit it again, back to that, hit it again, back to that, hit it again, and back to that. As you can see, the random factor of it is not very helpful. And there is no way of actually choosing your own light show. This random option is the only one to do. But once again, that's just for the light show. We're actually wanting to look at the songs, right? This is supposed to be Wish You Were Here. Now, once again, keep in mind that the twos here are not going to be showing up. But as you can see, this tab makes no sense at all. I didn't once again know how to play this, but if you're looking at what I'm looking, it, it is not okay <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. And that is on top of the fact that, obviously, songs have multiple parts. You have bass, you have guitar, you have drums, all that kind of stuff. You'll have multiple guitar parts as well. Now, in this app, there are, very commonly, ten guitars in each tab. You don't hear them at the same time, but you can switch between which guitar track you want. And there will be like 10 of them, and they all won't make sense. And like there are some tabs on here, like the Walk This Way tab on here, where two tracks will only go in two measures of the song and missing the first note as well. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. You'd have to find the right tab within the tab they give you. And it's not like they're separate tabs. It's all the same tab. They just have multiple guitar tracks for some reason. And it makes no sense at all. So, in other words, if you're trying to learn guitar with this, it will not work. You will not learn how to play these songs. Now, for example, they do have chords to try and learn songs. So you can, you can try and find any chord you want. Like, this is a C major chord. It'll tell you how to play the chord, which is useful, but this is something that any guitar tab book will be able to teach you. Now, they do have lessons as well, but I kid you not. The lessons are literally just categorizing the chords and scales they already have in the app. Like chords and notes and scales, they're all there already. You can look at them like I showed you anytime you want. All the lessons do is go, hey, I would like to learn a major chord. What major chord would you want to learn? An E major chord. Great. Here's the chord for it. And they take you back to the chord section where it shows you the E major chord where you can get much faster just by hitting chords. It doesn't make any sense at all. It literally, every single way this could have succeeded, they failed at completely. And that comes to the major, 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 major downside with this. All of that is already bad enough as it is. But this sticker sheet I have on this guitar right now 
cannot be put on any other guitars ever. So once you buy this product and you use this product, you've now officially used it the only time you could ever use it. You get a new guitar, tough luck. The reason for that is, like I said, stickers. This is the second guitar I put this one fret zealot on. I put it on my main guitar first because I was excited to use it and I wanted to see my light show on my main guitar, which I was hoping to use on stage. Once again, I figured out it was horrible, so I moved it from that guitar to this guitar. And honestly, it was a big struggle. That's why this tore off, or this tore off right here, right? Yeah, that's why this LED strip tore off is because Honestly, I wasn't even doing that much to it. I was just slowly tearing it off, and it just naturally tore off. That is a fault of mine. I'm not going to fault that on the manufacturer, but it is proving that this is this is it. This is the it for it, the fret zealot. I cannot use it anymore. So in a way, it is scary that it could actually damage your guitar as well and put down the quality of it. I'm going to say that's not going to be a scenario because my other guitar is still just fine. But it, it it doesn't feel right. It really doesn't feel right putting something like this on a guitar. It really doesn't. So my final verdict is, remember when I mentioned Rocksmith at the beginning of this review? That right there is probably still the best way you'd be able to learn a guitar in a method like this. Because not only do they actually give you the authentic ways to play them, and in a scaling difficulty kind of manner where you can learn these songs at a very, very easy pace, but they also let you hear the songs while you play them. They, they don't make you listen to this really, really bad MIDI file that this thing makes you listen to. And not only that, but you can use any guitar anytime you want. And not only that, but it's way cheaper. Because you know how much I spent for this? I spent 200 I am deeply regretting this decision. I spent $200 on this. There is literally no way to justify this $200 price tag. There really isn't. I can't find a single way. The only thing this really justifies is crying into my pillow at the end of the night when I'm done making this video. <laughs> this last little segment of the video, I'm going to show you how my BC Rich now sounds thanks to this Fred Zelt. So I hope you enjoy my rendition of Raining Blood on a Fred Zelt guitar. Take it away, other me. Wow, that's awesome.